Japan's Prime Minister has taken a first-hand look at reconstruction work in the disaster-hit northeast. Yoshiko Noda visited the port city of Kamaishi to see how the local fishing industry is recovering. The Prime Minister toured a fish market on Saturday morning. He was accompanied by Reconstruction Minister Tatsu Hirano and other local officials. The disaster decimated Kamaishi's main industry. Land in the area sank nearly one meter, destroying fishing facilities. But locals fought to revive the businesses and fish trading resumed in full last August. Noda tasted scallops cultivated in Kamaishi Bay after the disaster. I was told that the fishing holes have recovered to around half their peak level. I will do my best to support the industry's revival. I even went so far as to falsify the report. Noda later visited another tsunami hit town, Otsuchi, to see its temporary shops and houses. Fishermen in Fukushima Prefecture are heading out to sea again. They're hoping a test catch will show that local seafood is safe to eat. Fishing crews gathered early Saturday at a port in Soma City. They took six boats about 60 kilometers out to sea. They planned to catch octopus and the shellfish known as whelk and check them for radioactive contamination. The test catches began late last month. The latest round will last for 10 days. It's part of a plan by the Prefectural Fisheries Association to check the safety of the catches and gauge consumer reaction. Stop being so nervous. Later on, we'll get ice cream. We've managed to come this far. I still feel uneasy about the future. But we must proceed, step by step. Niagara Falls! Slowly I turned, and step by step, inch by inch, I walked up to him and I smashed him. I hit 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 and I knocked him down. The fishermen hope to ship seafood to Tokyo and other major markets if consumers within the prefecture respond positively. Oh my God. The rain has been falling so hard and so fast on the Japanese island of Kyushu that the ground just can't keep up. Much of the deluge isn't being absorbed. So it's triggering, uh, it's triggering flooding and mudslides. At least 11 people are dead. 15 others are missing. NHK World's Mitsuko Nishikawa reports. This is the sometimes brutal reality of Japan's rainy season. Towns and villages littered with torn up trees and vegetation, twisted train tracks, and streets that look like swampy, muddy messes. The last time this 72-year-old resident faced a cleanup like this was 25 years ago. We've got to get this mud out quickly. Otherwise, it will get sticky and then harden. The rain started coming down around dawn in most places, and it came down hard, pelting the ground and lashing buildings. People awoke to find usually calm rivers had turned into roaring torrents. Crews tried to keep the water at bay, but in some areas, they just couldn't. Rivers swamped neighborhoods. And rescuers had to go in with boats to whisk away residents. In some cases, they had to drop down from the sky to save people. Whenever people got a break in the rain, they started cleaning up. Families scooped water and mud out of the living rooms. And crews attacked piles of rubble. This is what it looked like when employees of the cell phone company arrived at work this morning. I don't know whether we ourselves will be able to deal with this situation. People in this part of Japan have dealt with these annual rains for generations. Still, when faced with a mess like this, history provides little comfort. Mitsuko Nishikawa, NHK World. The record rain in Kyushu during the last four days. 
tens of thousands of households are under evacuation orders. Officials at the meteorological agency say warm, damp air from the south is fueling the rain front. Hourly rainfall in Yame City, Fukuoka Prefecture topped 110 millimeters on Saturday morning. More than 800 millimeters of rain have fallen in Aso City, Kumamoto Prefecture over the last three days. The record rainfall is hindering the search for missing people. My relative is missing. All I can do is worry about that. River levels rose sharply and the risk of mudslides is also up within the region. Officials have issued evacuation orders or advisories to people living near mountains. About 119,000 people in northern Kyushu have been told to evacuate their homes. Weather officials are also warning people to be on the alert for tornadoes and lightning. Officials at Japan's industry ministry have come up with a way to overhaul the way electricity is generated and supplied. They say they want to completely liberalize the power market so people can choose their suppliers. The officials want to unbundle the generation and transmission operations of power companies. They want lawmakers to revise legislation quickly to make that possible. The changes would end the regional monopolies of utilities that have been generating, transmitting and selling electricity for decades. All suppliers would get equal access to power lines. People in Japan endured a serious shortage of electricity after the nuclear accident in Fukushima. That shortage prompted government officials to start discussing ways to overhaul the supply system in February. For a while, people were talking about the molten mixture of isotopes, mm -hmm. which they call corium. I think it was just a, uh, you know, expanding on the, the idea of a radioactive core, so they call it corium. Uh, and this is the molten mass, and what's happening with it? Where is this? Is Do we know what's going on? I don't think so. And there were there were uh, discussions at one point about concerns about the corium hitting the water table and other problems. And where that situation stands, I don't know. I actually have read very little about it. Um, and again, I find that uh, uh, not good. So the, the, I, the core could be burning down through the the, the floor of the facility and and actually boring down through the Earth's crust? Is, is that possible? Uh, you know, I, I don't think it's, uh, you know, you get into this China syndrome right. uh, kind of idea. But, but uh, in fact, it's, it's, um, it's, it's less dramatic than that, but in another way more worrisome. Uh, you know, it's not a matter of this core going into the center of the Earth. It's, it's more a question of whether or not it hits the water table of the, uh, mm -hmm. of the area. Because... When that happens, then you begin to have uh, contamination in the water table. You begin to have steam releases. You could have explosions. You could have other uh, types of events. And I don't want to say too much about that because I, I haven't studied that. in detail. Yeah. But, but I will say that, that I, I do feel very strongly it's another issue that should be studied intensely, and we should all be hearing about it. Well, we appreciate the work that um, Hall of High has done in this uh, matter, and we, we, we um, commend you uh, for this work because uh, uh, the public around the world deserves to know the truth, and we don't need scare tactics and we don't need cover-ups, but we need to know the hard, cold facts about what is going on in Japan because uh, the whole planet could be affected by this uh, disaster if, if the worst-case scenario took place, and we pray and hope that it doesn't, that somehow this thing can be contained, although that seems to be almost an impossible feat, but um, perhaps uh, for the sake of humanity it will happen. Uh, I appreciate uh, my guest today, Dr. Paul Gailey, and he's the uh, CEO of the uh, Swiss Industrial Analytic Think Tank. Holy we have waited. have waited for so long for somebody to listen to us. When the mainstream press and the government says nobody could have predicted this, they're lying through their fucking teeth.
we all said, saw exactly what was going to happen and how it was going to happen and remarkably when it was going to happen. None of us expected the collapse to be as severe as it's proving to be or as fast as it's proving to be. But we've been screaming for years and we've been watching everything we said come to pass and we have felt so... angry. Oh. A generation of fans remembers the first time they saw Godzilla stomp across the big screen. Action movies like this were made using live action filming and handmade props. Nowadays such movies are rarity. Digital technology has become the norm for special effects. As NHK World's Tomoko Kamata reports, an exhibition in Tokyo celebrates the craftsmanship behind some of Japan's film classics. Film directors today can create almost anything with computer graphics, monsters, aircrafts, or even living creatures. But back when there were no computers, filmmakers had to use more basic tools to divide scenes that didn't exist. This exhibition focuses on unique generation of Japanese filmmakers and their amazing miniature sets. A Japanese movie genre known as tokusatsu flourished in the 1950s. That's when the first Godzilla film was released. Tokusatsu films often feature superheroes or science fiction plots. They use live action filming, handmade props, and lots of special effects. Japan produced scores of such movies, depicting superheroes, monsters, and fantastic machines. Filmmakers competed to create original visuals with impact. This exhibition opened this week in Tokyo. On display are about 500 movie props, illustrations, and stage sets used in Tokusatsu films. This is Gamera, one of the most popular figures in Japanese film history. An actor wearing this suit battled fictional enemies intent on destroying the Japanese capital. One of the main attractions of Tokusatsu movies is that they feature familiar places as the setting for unimaginable events. Artisans worked tirelessly to create the sets. Realistic miniatures were key in bringing the imaginary film creatures to life. Japan's tokusatsu evolved in a very unique way. The high quality of the performances and the skills needed to create such magnificent images are uniquely Japanese. These days, Filmmakers routinely craft special effects and backgrounds with computer graphics. The skills needed to make traditional movie miniatures are on the verge of disappearing. Exhibition organizers want today's generation to appreciate the wonders of tokusatsu movies. They hope to inspire a new wave of handcrafted films. 